Welcome to the fifth lecture of module 4 of mass transfer operation. In this module, we are discussing absorption mass transfer. Before going to this lecture, let us have brief recap on our previous lecture. In our previous lecture, we have discussed three important things. One is design based on HTP method, height equivalent to a theoretical plate HTP method. And second thing we have considered how to simplify the general procedure for designing a pack towers and how to simplify the pack tower design equation to calculate the height of packing required for the dilute gases. So, design for pack towers. for dilute gases. The third thing we have considered here the pack tower design for concentrated gases. In this lecture, we will mostly consider on the uh, design of plate towers and both for the single component absorption and also for introduction to the multi component system. Now, let us consider uh, absorption in tray towers as we have introduced during the discussion of our equipment for absorption and uh, distillation process. There are two major towers, one is pack towers, another is tray towers or tray absorber. So, in this case, in tray absorber, to find out the number of ideal trays, we can use there is a special kind of design procedure which is known as McCabe Thiele diagram type. So, you can see over here in the pack towers, the liquid which enter at the top having this composition and the gases which enter at the bottom and which is in this composition and also the gas flow rate and liquid flow rate both gases of the inlet liquid and gas are mentioned over here. And we have a outlet liquid at the bottom and outlet gas at the top both the flow rates and their compositions are mentioned and trays are numbered uh, from the top of the column 1, 2, 3 up to n p. So, as you can see from this, this is counter current absorber. So, we will mostly consider counter current absorber design over here for the plate columns. The McCarthy diagram is most useful when the operating line is straight. If the operating line are straight, this is easier to do the graphical calculation of number of ideal trays. So, for this we need to require some assumptions that is the energy balances be automatically satisfied and liquid flow rate by vapor flow rate remains constant. So, their ratio remains constant L by G. Now, in order for energy balance to be automatically satisfied, we must assume that the heat of absorption is negligible. So, very negligible heat of absorption. There is reactions between the solvent and the solute because of the solubility of a certain component based on the affinity of the solvent, it generates huge amount of heat. Then we cannot use this type of method. Only the cases where heat of absorption is negligible, then only this energy balance should be automatically satisfied and operation should be isothermal in nature. These two assumptions will uh, no, guarantee satisfaction of the enthalpy balance equation. When the gas and liquid streams are both fairly dilute, 
the assumptions will probably be satisfied. So, basically when we have a dilute gas mixture and the solute transfer is negligible, so the change of heat due to the absorption is very less and we can consider the isothermal operation of the column. Now, it is usually convenient for trade towers to define the flow rates L and G simply as mole per hour rather than based on the unit tower cross section and we also desire a, a straight operating line. So, this is the things we need. This will automatically true if we define L by G is equal to moles of non-volatile solvent per hour divided by moles of insoluble carrier gas per hour. So, this is L by G so, and if we assume that the solvent is non-volatile and carrier gas is insoluble. So, if we have a mixture of say certain component like oxygen and nitrogen and now we consider nitrogen is inert for the solvent, nitrogen is insoluble and oxygen is only soluble. Then the other case, if we take a solvent which does not vaporize or it considered essentially non-volatile in nature, then this energy balance will be automatically satisfied or L by G remains uh, no, constant. The result of these last two assumptions are that the mass balances for the solvents, so the liquid flow rates remain constant throughout the column. So, you can see, so L0 which is entering at the top, then at any section of the column J is Lj and would be equal to Lnp which is coming out and uh, we can call it L as constant. Similarly, the mass balances for the carrier gas, no, G N p plus 1 which is entering here and then it is uh, no, G j at this location and then G 1 at the no, first plate and then G which is coming out over here, this is the gas flow rate which is coming out at the exit at top of the column. So, that remains constant. Then the derivation for this you know, figure we can write inlet stream L is L naught and the inlet G stream is G n p plus 1. So, L naught and G n p plus 1 that is the inlet conditions instead of G 2 H for the single stage like in single stage we use G 2. So, instead of G n p plus 1. So, bottom we mentioned uh, no, position 2 and top as position 1. So, instead of that it is G n p plus 1. The product outlet streams is G 1 over here and instead of L n p which is over here. The total number of stages here is considered n p which is numbered from top 1 to n p. So, total number of stages is n p. Now, if we do the overall balance on all stages throughout the column, the inlet is L naught and G n p plus 1. So, this one and the exit which is L n p and G 1. So, this is the overall material balance on all stages. Now, if we do the component balance for the species so of the solute with the inlet liquid we have L naught X naught and similarly with the inlet gases is plus G n p plus 1 into Y capital Y n p plus 1. So, which is over here. So, this is the inlet and the exit composition is L n p into X n p that is over here and then multiplied by G 1 into capital Y 1. So, this is the 
overall component balance. Now, making a total material balance over first n stages, if we consider any stage n from top, then if we do that, it would be L naught plus G n plus 1 would be equal to L n plus G 1. Now, making a component balance over that section of the no, column for the first n stages. So, we would obtain L naught x naught plus G n plus 1 into capital Y n plus 1 is equal to L n x n plus G 1 y 1. So, this is equation 4. Now, if we solve for this equation, so this is our equations we have done for the first n stages component balance. Now, if we solve for y n plus 1, we can write y n plus 1 would be equal to l n x n plus g 1 y 1 minus l naught x naught by g n plus 1. So, this is an important material balance equation and it is often called an operating line. So, you can see the operating line has an intercept over here with the known composition g 1 y 1 minus l naught x naught by g n plus 1. This is the slope of the curve into x n. Now, if we apply the assumptions that the above equations becomes y n plus 1 is equal to l by g x n plus y 1 minus l by g x naught. So, this is equation 6 and this is a straight line with the slope l by g. Now, intercept as we said intercept is this part y 1 minus l by g x naught and thus if we plot y versus x, we have a Macapthile type of graph as shown in the figure over here. So, we have the equilibrium curve, this one is equilibrium curve and this is no either L s by G s or essentially we can call it L by G. With this slope, we have this operating line, this is the operating line equation. And then to find out the number of plates, we need to follow the certain steps. Plot y versus x equilibrium data convert into mole fraction to ratios at you can see capital Y and capital X, these are plotted over here in mole ratio unit. And then values of x naught y n p plus 1, y 1 and L by G are known. So, all these uh, point these are the inlet con uh, no composition for the liquid, this is inlet composition for the gas, this is exit composition for the gas and L by G, these are known. So, the point x naught y 1 that is known on this point. So, operating line since it represents the passing streams. So, this is known to us and then slope L by G we know. So, with that we can plot the operating line. We have plotted the equilibrium line here and we can plot the operating line with this no data. Then we can calculate the number of stage. Now, starting from this point, so this is the passing streams at every point or mixing point, we can say that at mixing point. And from here, you know, what it reads at a particular plate, it reaches to the equilibrium for the ideal stages. So, from this passing streams, so we need to proceed to the equilibrium line. So, this represents one equilibrium stage or one ideal stage. So, from the mixing point for a particular tray and it moves to the if you move to the equilibrium line and this is one tray. So, this is the first tray. Now, from this what will happen this you no know, composition with x 1 liquid 
and the gases which will pass through that liquid you having the composition of Y2. So, you move to the you no know, operating line and then you move to the equilibrium curve with the so this is the mix another mixing point and then you move to the equilibrium curve. So, this two represents the second stage. So, now in similar way if you just make the staircase arrangement from this mixing point you go to the equilibrium line and go to the operating line this represents one equilibrium stage. So, similarly you can plot till the exit concentration is reached and then when you reach the you know, bottom tray composition you need to stop to find out the number of trays required. So, which is N p over here shown over here. So, this is N p number of stages and you can see it reaches the bottom of the tower composition which is y n p plus 1 and x n p. So, this way we can find out graphically using the Machiavelli type of diagram to calculate the number of ideal stage required for a particular separation. Let us consider an example to solve this type of problem. So, ammonia is to be absorbed from a air mixture counter currently in a plate column with fresh water. Ammonia concentration is reduced from 10 mole percent to 1 mole percent and the inlet water and gas rates are respectively 500 and 400 kg per meter square second. Now, we need to calculate the number of actual plate required for an absorber. Now, equilibrium data for the system is given at 20 degree centigrade and 1 atmosphere pressure. Uh, it is given capital X and capital Y these are given and the molar masses of air, ammonia and water they are given 29, 17 and 18 kg per k mole. Now, plate efficiency is given 70 percent for all plates in the column. So, now we need to calculate the actual number of plates required for this separation. Now, the equilibrium data for the system at 20 degree centigrade and 1 atmosphere pressure is given. Now, assume that the solubility of air in water is negligible compared to the solubility of ammonia. So, air is considered as a inert carrier gas with respect to no ammonia and it is insoluble in water. So, the compared to the solubility of ammonia molecular weight of the inlet gas we can calculate. So, uh, which is 90 percent of air. So, it is 0 0.9 into 29 plus 10 percent of ammonia which is 0 0.1 into 17. So, it is 27.8 kg per k mole. Now, we can calculate G 1 which is at the exit stream of top of the column which is 400 uh, divided by 27 average molecular weight is 27.8. So, it is 14.39 kilo mole per meter square second. Now, of this total we have 90 percent is here. So, 90 percent would be 12.95 kilo mole per meter square second is here. Now, ammonia in the feed stream is you no know, 14.39 into 0 0.1 is the mole fraction of ammonia in the uh, feed stream. So, it is 1.439 kilo mole per meter square second. So, ammonia in the feed stream and then this G 2 the gas flow rate G 2 would be 12.95 plus 1.439 into 0 0.1. So, it is 13.09 kilo mole per meter square second. The inlet liquid is pure water. So, L 2 would be 500 by 18. So, which is equal to 27.78 kilo mole per meter square second. So, L 1 would be equal to L 2 plus G 1 minus G 2. So, which is essentially 27.78 and 14.39 is your no G 1 and then G 2 is 13.09 
So, if we substitute here, so it would be 29.09 kilo mole per meter square second. So, we have the data G 1 L 1 and G 2 and L 2. Now, compare liquid and gas flow rates at both top and bottom before deciding if the system is dilute or not. So, if we look into that L 2 by G 2, it is around 27.78 by 13.09 which is 2.12. Similarly, L 1 by G 1 if we divide 29.09 divided by 14.39 which is 2.02. So, if the average if we take average L by G would be 2.12 plus 2.02 uh, divided by 2 which is 2.07. So, essentially L by G is you know almost close to each other and we can assume they are constants. So, the, so these values are close enough to justify an approximation of the liquid to gas ratio of 2.07 throughout the column. And y 1 is known it is 0 0.1 because 10 percent ammonia and y 2 is no 0 0.01 because it is 1 percent ammonia in the exit stream. So, that has to be reduced from 10 mole percent of ammonia to 1 mole percent of ammonia. Now, liquid solvent which is water contains no solute at the entry, solvent is solute free. So, x 2 is 0, capital Y 1 we can calculate which is equal to small y 1 divided by 1 minus y 1 which is 0 0.1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.12. And similarly, y 2 we can calculate is equal to small y 2 divided by 1 minus y 2 and which is essentially 0 0.01 divided by 1 minus 0 0.01 and which is essentially 0 0.01 not 1. So, mole ratio unit capital Y 1 and capital Y 2 is known. Now, average L by G into x 1 minus x 2 would be equal to y 1 minus y 2, this is from the species mole balance. If we substitute average L by G which is 2.07 into x 1 minus x 2 would be equal to 0 0.12 minus 0 0.0101. From here and also as the entry is the solvent is solute free, so it is x 2 would be essentially 0, we will have x 1 minus x 2 would be this, x 1 would be 0 0.053. So, x 1 is now calculated capital X 1 and capital X 2 is known. When drawn on the graph, the gap between the operating line and the equilibrium data gives 3.5 theoretical plates. So, you can just look into the graph and you have the initial point which is you know capital X not which is basically x 2 is 0, y 1 which is over here. So, this is y 1. So, this point is known and final composition it will go to point 0 0.053 point 0 0.053. So, you start from here and then move to the equilibrium curve from the mixing point. So, this is one equilibrium stage, then move to the operating line and again move to the equilibrium curve. So, you will have another ideal stages and similar procedure you can follow. So, you will have another the third stage and then you can move and you can go to the exit stream composition that is 0 0.053 and we can consider each half plate from the graph. So, essentially we will get 3.5 stage. Now, as the efficiency for the plate is 70 percent, so the number of real trays required. So, each plate is having the efficiency of 0 0.7, 70 percent efficiency. The ideal plate divided by 0 0.7 is the actual plate required to perform this job. So, essentially it will give 5 actual 
plates needed for this separation. So, this is how we can use the McKeep Thiele method to calculate the number of ideal plates and uh, then we can calculate number of actual plate required for a given job. Let us move to the absorption in trade hours for multi component absorption as also for stripping. Now, when the gas contains several soluble components or the liquid contains several volatile ones for stripping, some modifications are needed. So, we cannot use the same method as we have done for the single component systems. The computational are to be started at the bottom of the tower. So, we have to start the computation at the bottom of the tower and the outlet liquid temperature and the composition must be known that is required to start the calculation for the multi component system. So, in this case it requires the outlet gas temperature be estimated. So, based on this known outlet liquid and composition we can calculate the outlet gas temperature. So, which is going at the top. So, our calculation starts at the bottom where we need the outlet liquid exit for counter current absorption tower the liquid exit at the bottom. So, its temperature and composition is known if we proceed to the gas exit at the top of the column then we need to estimate the temperature which is going out at top of the tower. So, to complete the enthalpy balance, it also requires that the complete outlet gas composition with respect to all components be estimated at the start. If that is there, so then we can complete the enthalpy balance equation. The quantity which are generally fixed for this design are the rate of flow, composition and temperature of the entering gas. The second thing which is fixed is composition and temperature of the entering liquid, not the liquid flow rate. The pressure of operation at which it will be operated and the heat gain or loss. Under these circumstances, the principal variable still remaining which are highlighted here, the liquid flow rate or the L by G ratio, either liquid flow rate or L by G ratio should be remaining which has to be estimated, the number of ideal trays required for the separation and then the fractional absorption of any co one component since it is multi component absorption or stripping the fractional absorption of a particular component has to be known or it is a principal variable over here. So, now uh, among these three if any two can be arbitrarily fixed for a given design. So, when the two have been specified the third is automatically fixed. So, you now out of these three you know, variables if we can you now decide any two the third will be automatically fixed. So, as a result for tray to tray calculation outlet temperature and the complete outlet composition is to be checked. So, we need to have a arbitrarily fixed design parameters, we need to have an approximate procedure to get those data to be fixed and this is provided through an approximate procedure offered by the Kremser equation. So, Kremser equation apply for constant absorption factor as we have discussed before and or through some procedure which allow the variation of the absorption factor with tray number either constant absorption factor or there would be some procedure which will allow the variation of the absorption factor from tray to tray and it is for each component. So, uh, over here this is a uh, no multi tray absorber or stripper similar to the one we have shown earlier. Since all components can transfer between the gas and liquid, so uh, there may be no substance which passes through a constant rate. So, because all the substances are transferring from one phase to the other. So, the constant rate for each substance you know, may not be there. So, that is why it is very convenient if we define the gas composition 
in terms of the entering gas and entering liquid. So, all the composition if we can define with the entering gas and liquid composition which are known to us, then it would be easier to compute. Thus, for any component in liquid leaving any tray n, so over here we can define x n dash is the mole of component in tray n divided by the moles of liquid entering. So, uh, no moles of component uh, no particular component in tray n if we consider x n and with a liquid flow rate l n divided by l naught is the no entering liquid feed flow rate. So, this is x n dash. Similarly, for the gas it is capital Y n dash would be equal to small y n g n divided by g n p plus 1. So, this is you no know, x n dash and y n dash these are defined based on the inlet flow rate which is known uh, for the liquid and the gas. So, small x n and small y n are the usual mole fractions over here. Now, consider the tray absorber as shown over here and if we do a material balance for any component about the equilibrium tray n. So, this one. So, we can write L naught x n dash minus x n minus 1 dash would be equal to g n p plus 1 into y n plus 1 dash minus y n dash. So, this is the no material balance for any component about an equilibrium tray n. Now, the equilibrium relation for the equilibrium tray n is we can write small y n would be equal to m n x n. So, now if we substitute equation 1 and equation 2 in equation 4, equation 1 and equation 2 is basically the no mole ratio we have calculated based on the known inlet flow rates. So, if we substitute in equation 4 over here, so we will essentially get capital Y n dash G n p plus 1 by G n would be equal to M n x n dash into L naught by L n. Now, similarly for n minus 1 tray, we can write Y n minus 1 dash g n p plus 1 by g n minus 1 would be equal to m n minus 1 into x n minus 1 into l naught by l n minus 1. Now, from equation 5 and 6. So, this is equation 5 and this is equation 6. So, from 5 and 6 we can write x n dash would be equal to y n dash g n p plus 1 divided by m n g n into l n by l naught and x n minus 1 dash would be equal to y n minus 1 dash g n p plus 1 divided by m n minus 1 into g n minus 1 whole into l n minus 1 by l naught. After rearrangement of these two equations we can write this. Now, if we substitute x n dash and x n minus 1 dash in equation 3 and then we rearrange the same. So, this is x n dash and this is x n minus 1 dash as we have derived before. This is the equation 3. Now, if we substitute these two, uh, no, it will give y n dash would be equal to y n plus 1 dash plus a n minus 1 into y n minus 1 dash divided by 1 plus a n. In this case, a n is equal to l n by m n g n and a n minus 1 is l n minus 1 by m n minus 1 into g n minus 1. So, these are the you know, component of absorption factors on two trays uh, for a n and a n minus 1. So, nth tray absorption factor and n minus 1 tray th absorption factor. For absorber which contains only one tray, if n is equal to 1, so equation 7 becomes 
this is equation 7 and from this we can write it is y1 dash would be equal to y2 dash plus a0 into y0 dash divided by 1 plus a1. So, just substitute n with 1, then from 7 we can get equation 8. Now, from equation 6 when n is equal to 1, we can write, so this is the equation 6 and when n is equal to 1, we can get y0 dash would be equal to m0 x0 dash l0 by l0 into g0 by g n p plus 1, which is equal to m0 x0 dash g0 by g n p plus 1 we can now write a naught y naught dash is equal to L naught by M naught G naught into M naught x naught dash G naught divided by G n p plus 1, which is equal to L naught x naught dash divided by G n p plus 1. So, substituting this equation 10 in equation 8 over here, if we substitute, then we will obtain equation 11 which is y1 dash would be equal to y2 dash plus L0 x0 dash divided by g n p plus 1 by 1 plus a1. So, this is you know y1 dash and then similarly if we just proceed for two trace. So, we will just substitute in the same equation 7 with n is equal to 2 and uh, no essentially uh, you will obtain y2 dash this is the substitute equation 11 in equation 12 which we have obtained, this is equation 11 which we have derived for y1 dash. So, substitute this y1 dash into this, so you will essentially obtain this relation equation 13 and similarly for 3 trait hour n is equal to 3 and you will obtain the equation 14. So, as you can see it will be y3 dash would be equal to a1 a2 plus a2 plus 1 y4 dash plus a1 a2 a0 into l0 into x0 x0 dash divided by g n p plus 1 divided by a1 a2 into a3 plus a2 into a a3 plus a3 plus 1. So, similarly for n p trace n is equal to n p for you no know, all the trace in a tray column of n p number of trace if we substitute you will obtain you no know, y n p dash. So, which is you know based on the you know, the inlet gas composition and the liquid composition with the absorption factor we can you no know, relate with them. So, in order to eliminate y n p over here which is inside the absorber a component material balance about the entire absorber is required. So, which is you know over here. So, this is the entire absorption tower uh, you know, component balance and uh, if n is equal to n p in equation 5, then we can write this is y n p dash. So, this is the equation and then uh, from equation 16 and 17, this is equation 16 and 17 eliminate x n p and substitute y n p dash in equation 17. So, this is equation 17 and uh, no, if we do the rearrangements uh, of you know using equation 15. So, we will have the equation 18 which is you know free from any composition inside the column. So, this equation 18 over here. So, this equation So, this is you no know, is an expression for the fractional absorption of any components because it is based only upon the material balance and the condition of equilibrium which defines an ideal tray. A similar expression for the stripper would be like this S1 and S2 up to Snp and Snp minus 1, these are the stripping factor and just inverse of the absorption factor and this is also based on the liquid compositions outside the tower. So, in order to use equation 18 and 19, 
what we need the L by G ratio for each tray and the tray temperature which determines the Ames, the equilibrium, the Henry's constant and it is also required to compute AS and SS that is absorption factor and stripping factor. If the liquid are not ideal, M for any component on any tray additionally depends upon the complete liquid composition. So, if liquid are not ideal, that will also depend on the complete liquid composition on that tray. The same is true for the gas composition under condition for which the gas solutions are not ideal. So, if also the gas phase are not ideal, not only liquid, the same features will also valid for the no, it depends on the gas composition as well. The equations are therefore practically useful only for the ideal solution. So, this should be remember that this is practically useful only for ideal solutions. Now, in order to simplify the computation, you know, Ed Mister has written the Horton Franklin equation in terms of the average or effective absorption and stripping factor instead of you no know, variable AS and SS. So, absorption factor and stripping factor for each tree. So, if we can use the average absorption factor or stripping factor, then it would be you know simplify the computation. Uh, thus, for the absorption equation 18, which becomes like this, this is equation 18 and this can be written as like this y n p plus 1 dash minus y 1 dash divided by y dash n p plus 1 would be equal to 1 minus L naught x naught dash divided by a dash g n p plus 1 into y n p plus 1 and whole into a e to the power n p plus 1 minus a e divided by a e to the power n p plus 1 minus 1. So, a e is the average or effective absorption factor over here. Similarly, you know, for a two tray absorber it develops this equation and uh, no effective absorption factor or average absorption factor can be uh, no defined like this. Similarly, for stripping we can obtain this relation by using the average stripping factor and uh, S dash can be written over here. So, this is for the stripping column design and this is for the plate towers using effective absorption factor and uh, this is for the tray column design for multi component systems. And S e is the effective a stripping factor uh, which is uh, given over here after the simplification. Uh, with this method, the simplified design which is presented over here for the multi component systems and this is only valid for the ideal solutions. These are, are no, basically the simplified procedure and you can learn more on the you know, if it is non ideal system both gas and liquid phase and how to uh, do the computation for that. So, thank you for attending this lecture. We will continue our discussion on the mass transfer operation for the next module which is module 5 and that would be our final module for distillation.